Good evening, dear friends. I think it's been a long day, and so I'm going to give you a non-ophthalmic, ophthalmic talk. Uh, it's more for the young surgeons, residents, fellows, those who are starting off their surgical career. Basically, I'm talking on something new. I'm talking on being a surgery athlete. So this is a new terminology, and you may be wondering what or who a surgery athlete is. So who is an athlete? An, a, an athlete is a person who has great physical dexterity and very good mental focus to accomplish whatever task he wants to do. So the surgeon is not unlike a top performing athlete because you need very good physical dexterity motor skills and mental focus to achieve good results and to perform well. I'll be talking to you about what I have learned on my way on 25 years or more of ophthalmic surgical practice and some of the pointers on how to learn surgery and how to become an accomplished surgeon. And I hope you enjoy this talk. So I'll be giving you the Ten Commandments to become an accomplished surgeon or a surgery athlete. So let us go to the first and most, I would say most important point is that you need to be a keen observer. Okay? I tell my fellows and residents, monkey see, monkey do. Okay? So what you observe is what will translate into your hands. And you have to be a very keen observer. There is a difference between seeing and observing. Seeing is when you're just having a casual look. But observing is when you take in the small details and you're able to assimilate this, understand why a particular step is being done, how it is being done, and you're able to exactly replicate that. So it's very important to observe a master surgeon at work because when you observe a good surgeon, you pick up all the good habits. And if you observe a bad surgeon, you pick up all the bad habits. And it's very difficult to reverse bad habits. I've seen that in my training. I've trained over 160 um, fellows and residents. And I see that those who have already trained and who have picked up the bad habits, it's very difficult from how to hold an instrument and how to approach the eye can make a big difference. From the efficiency to fatigue during surgery to accomplishing what step you want to do. So if they have observed somebody doing it the wrong way, they pick up the same thing. So it's very important to observe a good surgeon. Now I'll tell you a story about observation and how you can learn about observation. It is from the Mahabharata. It's a story of a tribal prince called Ekalavya. I don't know how many of y'all have heard this story, but for those who don't know the story, Ekalavya was a tribal prince who wanted to learn archery. And he was very passionate about learning archery. And he thought, I should learn from the best. The best teacher then was Dronacharya. Dronacharya was the guru of the Pandavas and Kauravas, and he was training them. And so Ekalavya goes and approaches him and tells him that, please accept me as your disciple, and I want to learn archery. But Dronacharya turns him away, says that, uh, I'm sorry, but I, treat, I teach only the Kshatriyas or the warriors, the warrior tribe. You are a tribal boy, and hence, I cannot teach you. And he turns him away. He would have promised one of the Pandavas, Arjuna, that he would make him the greatest archer in the world. And they, they used to practice every day. Ekalavya is disappointed, but then he comes there every day, stands there at a distance, and just observes all that Drona is teaching Arjuna takes in every small point, every teaching from a distance. 
and they, they, they're not even, they're not able to see him and they're not able to make out whether he's learning or observing them. He's at a distance, he's very keenly observing them and then Drona is his inspiration. He goes back to the forest, makes a statue, mud statue of Dronacharya as a teacher and then starts practicing whatever he has observed and learned. A few months or years pass and then Dronacharya along with the Kauravas are, they go to the forest on a trip and there's a dog which is barking incessantly and Drona is irritated. He tells Arjuna, why don't you shoot that dog with your arrow? And Arjuna aims his arrow and before he can shoot the arrow, suddenly there is, there are about 10 arrows which are shot, which go into the mouth of the dog and then the dog is not able to bark any longer. Arjuna is surprised by this feat and then he, he turns towards Dronacharya and says, you promised that I would be the greatest archer in the world, but then there is somebody who is able to shoot better than me. And Dronacharya himself is surprised because he says, I haven't taught anybody. And then they go and see this tribal boy and Dronacharya asks him, how did you learn archery? You are you're an expert archer. How did you learn archery? Then he takes Dronacharya, come I'll show you my teacher and takes him and shows him the statue of Dronacharya. Okay, so Ekalavya became the greatest archer just by observing. Of course the story continues that yeah, Arjuna, Arjuna is very unhappy and he, he accuses Drona saying that see this chap has learned from you where, where you promised me that I would be the greatest archer. So Drona asked for his Guru Dakshina or teacher's fee and the fee he asked is for the thumb of Ekalavya, the right thumb of, of Ekalavya. But at that point Ekalavya realizes that his mission in life is accomplished. He is recognized as the greatest archer. He beat Arjuna and he gladly cuts off his thumb, puts it on a beetle leaf and hands it over to uh, Dronacharya. So this is the power of observation. If you are a keen observer, then you can pick up all the steps of surgery and you can implement it. So the first step is to be a very keen observer. Coming to the next, it's very important to develop fine motor skills. And whatever you perceive or you think of, whatever step you think of, your hand should be able to execute it. Many people are able to visualize the step, but they are not able to implement it or execute it because of poor motor skills. So how do you develop motor skills? If you want to be an athlete, you have to have good physical dexterity. Of course, as you practice surgery, as you practice in the wet lab, you develop these skills. But there are, are there any specific exercises to actually improve the small muscles of your hand? the dexterity, dexterity of your fingers. And I was looking at this and definitely there are some exercises which you can do to improve the strength of your, of your hand muscles, of your fingers. So, do any of you all know what this is? These are Chinese hand balls. They are known as boarding balls and they, they were made during the Ming dynasty and they actually help in improving dexterity. They help improving the strength of the finger, they help improve dexterity, they also help in focus, it's a meditative process and it has a calming effect on the mind. And this is, yeah, it works on the mind and this is how you do it, you keep on rolling the balls between your palms in your, in your fingers and you keep doing this. Of course, when you start off you may find it difficult without dropping these balls. These also have chimes and then after some time without these balls touching each other you can still roll them in your hands and then you can do it faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and then you become more dextr uh, dexterous with this. You can also do it with your left hand and you can practice. This is one of the small things that you can do Chinese balls.
the other experiment you may be wondering what this is this is something i devised yeah it's high time i think everybody is <laughs> looking forward to the break and going for drinks and dinner but i'll show you a simple exercise which you can do with this of course you finish drinking the beer and you have an empty bottle hold it between your two fingers like this okay and then try to move the bottle up without either tilting it or rotating it so you just with your hand you keep moving it okay try it it's not very easy but as you keep doing it you will find that your fingers become quite strong you can you can try this exercise both with your right hand and your left hand and then you will be comfortably after some time you will be able to do it if it becomes too easy if it becomes too easy no it may become easier if it becomes too easy then you can leave half the beer in the bottle and try it again and with time you will see that your fingers become quite strong in fact then you can see this this is the cap your fingers become so strong that you can easily bend the cap the crown of the beer bottle yeah the cap so you can use that also as to assess your strength so it's very important to have fine motor skills also playing video ga games also can help with this now the other important aspect okay in learning surgery a very important aspect i'm just going to show you a video a video not texting <laughs> you're using only a thumb there you want to use all your <laughs> all the muscles of your hand so i'm going to show you a video it's an unedited surgical video it's a fake surgery and i want you to it's a routine case of mine okay so i want you to observe this very carefully and at the end of it i'm going to ask you a question so this timer also you can just look at this is a routine cataract probably 2 plus so the incision and then the capsular excess this is unedited hydro dissection decompression rotation and then i go in with the fico the patient is moving the eye a little so i have to use the joystick to bring it in i chop the nucleus that's a direct chop and that's removal of the quadrant and then i sh shift over it takes a little time to the ia and that's the irrigation aspiration remove the cortex and you can see that uh, it's a fairly meticulous job including that's the capsular polishing hydro polish where i polish the capsule thoroughly remove any debris and that's the intraocular lens implant of course the lens takes about it's a hydrophobic lens so it takes about 20 seconds to unfold so that was a routine surgery okay the lens is unfolded centered well and close so you can see uh about 2 and 1/2 minutes but what is 
the most important aspect in this surgery that you observed? Residents, any of them? What is the most important aspect that you observed in this surgery? Stable hand, yes, that is there. Finishing every step with one try. Hmm? Finishing every step with one try. Pardon? Finishing every step with one try. So, so not repeating yes. any step? The most important thing is what I call economy of movement and repeatability of steps. Repeatability of steps means that you can do the same step again and again, but you should not repeat the step. If you do not repeat the step, there is economy of movement and that is how you develop speed. So speed is not doing the surgery in haste. Speed is when you're able to execute each movement without having to repeat it again. So there's economy of movement, you save time, and that's how you become a skilled surgeon and a fast surgeon. What is skill? What is skill? Skill is the ability to accomplish a given task efficiently and safely in the minimum given time. Okay, that is skill. So how do you become a skillful surgeon is when you develop economy of movement and repeatability. So every surgery has to have the same kind of movement and repeatability. The other aspect which is very important is mindfulness and awareness. And this is something which will differentiate you as a surgeon. Because this is something I see in residents. Those who have mental focus, for an athlete, you have to have mental focus. It's very important to have very good mental focus. If you do not have mental focus, then you will not be able to execute your movements. You will not be able to achieve what you want to do. I've seen that in residents because now you have so much of distraction. You have social media, you have television, you have so many things going on and so the mind is always jumping from you know one thing to the other and even when you're doing surgery oh I posted on Facebook or Insta but I didn't get many likes why didn't this person like or why did that person comment like this it's always going on there so you're not able to focus on that moment so what is very important is to develop this mindfulness and awareness in whatever you do so if you're doing surgery, you have to be 100% focused on surgery. And if your mind is distracted or if somebody is observing and you're thinking, oh, what is that person thinking? He's observing my surgery. You're never going to accomplish. And that is the secret in live surgery. When you do live surgery, the difference between a, you may be a very good surgeon, but if you do not have mindfulness and awareness, then you become nervous. You're thinking about other things about what other people are thinking and then you're going to mess up your surgery. So this is something that you have to practice. Each and every step has to be deliberate. And you should think about each and every step. You should feel the tissue. You should feel the direction when you're making your incision. And it has to be very vivid. Okay, That vivid awareness is something that you should develop if you're going to be a good surgeon. That you can do with meditative practices. It doesn't come easily. You can start off with uh, Vipassana. Just concentrate on your breathing. Let the thoughts flow and slowly you will be able to channelize your thoughts. And just focus on your breathing. And then after some time, you will actually stop thinking. You are completely in the present. You are completely aware about every small thing at that particular moment of time. And that is awareness, that is meditation. And surgery can become a meditative practice. The fifth commandment, very important, something that can change your life is what I call visualization. Okay? Visualization is the ability to foresee a step, to imagine the whole surgical plan, 
Imagine yourself doing each and every step in vivid detail, okay? So mindfulness, awareness, visualization, all that go hand in hand. They are all interlinked. Let me tell you a story about visualization. This is about Major James Nesmith, who was, who was with the US Army. He was a golfer, he used to play golf and he was a very average golfer and he wanted to be a very good golfer and he was practicing but then war broke out he was posted to Vietnam and there he was captured but by the Viet Cong he was captured he was put into a small cage a five by four cage with no other human contact he couldn't speak to anybody there was nobody around he was in complete isolation he couldn't even move around and then he thought maybe he's going to get, somebody's going to come and rescue him, but his days went by, nothing happened. And then he thought, okay, I should do something, otherwise I'm going to go mad. And then he kind of recreated the golf course in his mind. And every day, he used to play a round of golf in his mind. He used to visualize each and every hole the tee off, the golf course, the freshly cut grass, the smell of freshly cut grass, the sun, the trees, the squirrels, the birds chirping, how he held the rough grip of the golf club, how he took his practice swing, how he addressed the ball, and the complete swing in his mind. The cage was so small he couldn't even swing there. It was all in his mind. And every day he did this for seven years in captivity. He visualized each and every stroke, even putting the ball until it went into the cup. He could hear the clink. And his vi visualization was so vivid. And he used to practice this every day for seven years. After seven years, he was released. And of course, because of the poor conditions, he was very frail. Physically, he had deteriorated quite a bit. And then he went back home and he thought, I'm going to play golf. And then the first game he played, he was able to play to scratch. That means he did not need, he used to take about 94 strokes before. And then after this, he was able to cut down to 74 strokes, almost 20 strokes he was able to cut down without having played golf for seven years. So that is the power of visualization. And it is a known fact, the plasticity of the mind and the neural networks and the connection. There was a study where, where there were two groups. One group actually visualized lifting weights every day for about half an hour to 45 minutes. They just visualized the motion of lifting weights. And after, after about two months, they actually measured and saw that there was an increase in muscle mass in these group of patients who used to visualize exercising and lifting weights every day. That is the power of the mind. So if you are able to, if you are able to accomplish visualization or learn the art of visualization, then you can accomplish anything. Even the top athletes, Olympic athletes, first visualize. If, even if you look at weightlifters, they they visualize the weight, how they are going to lift the motion before they actually lift the weight. And then they are able to easily do it. So this is something that you have to practice. When I was learning surgery, we didn't have any internet. We didn't have YouTube. We were not able to see any videos. And we just used to read books, surgical books, and then visualize. Imagine the steps, each and every step and then do the surgery and we were able to do it. But today there's information overload. There's so many videos on YouTube, so many um, articles for you to read, wet labs, everything. But then the visualization has reduced, imagination has reduced and this is something that you forget. So this is, visualization is something that you have to practice to improve your surgical skills. Let's go to the fifth. 
It's called streamline or the algorithm of surgery. Many a time, you have so many things on your mind, okay? That, okay, I have to check this, I have to do that. For this patient, I have to recheck the biometry. I have to do uh, his post-refractive surgery. I have to see if the pentacam has been done. There's so many things. And that occupies a lot of space in your mind. And then you become stressed. So easy way is to make checklists. And we do that. You have a checklist so that pre-op you can check off things that need to be done. You can have a workflow for a particular patient and see that all the steps have been completed and that makes it easier. Even when you're doing your surgery, you should plan the algorithm or you should have a walkthrough of your surgery. Be before you enter the OR also, you should have a walkthrough. Every step you're going to do. At that particular step, if you have a problem, if you have a problem, how we are going to manage it. Because surgery, like the battlefield, is a very fluid situations, uh, situation. Things can change very rapidly. And when that happens, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have an algorithm of managing um, a complication, then you get stuck, you become nervous, you get stressed, and you're bound to make more mistakes. A complication is just a change in the surgical plan. It will not affect the patient as long as the outcome is good. You may have a PCR, but if you know how to manage it, you can do a PCCCC vitrectomy, put the lens in the bag. It's just a change in the surgical plan. For the patient, there is no difference. So you don't have to be afraid of complications, but you should know how to manage them, and you should have the algorithm of uh, surgery. The other aspect, which is very important, as surgeons, as doctors, we become very busy and we are sitting in the office all day long, seeing patients, looking through the slit lamp, using the indirect, sitting at surgery, and our physical activity reduces. We become very sedentary and over a period of time, we develop a lot of problems because of bad posture. You can have neck problems, disc prolapse, back problems, and all these invariably start. So from the beginning, you will have to incorporate physical activity and exercise so that you are in top shape. You are a top performing athlete, so you can't be sedentary. You have to have a level of physical fitness because there's a saying, there's a Greek saying, men sano in corporo sano. A sound body has a sound mind. So you're able to focus only when you have a sound body. Even with yoga, the first thing is the physical aspect or the, the asana so that you are comfortable physically. You're able to sit comfortably and then you can focus and meditate. If you're uncomfortable sitting, you have joint aches, pains, you cannot focus. You cannot meditate. So physical activity and exercise has to be done every day and this is something that I tell all my residents, please incorporate it, make it a part of your life, it should be a lifestyle. Whether it is yoga, whether you're going to the gym, you're going for a run, you're playing sport, that is something that you have to incorporate. The seventh is teamwork. You know all top athletes have a team, they have their coach, they have their trainer, they have their uh, physiotherapist, the manager, so it's a whole team that works to enhance the performance of the athlete. So similarly, surgeons should have a team. You can have a team of counselors, technicians, biometrists, OT assistants. So the whole team should work together in unison, and that's when you can increase the efficiency and become a good surgeon. So I'll just show you a short video on how I operate. I do about 15, 16 cataracts an hour. It is possible. When I say this, many people say it's not possible, but it is possible. And this is how I do it. This is in fast forward. I'm not such a fast surgeon, but I'm sitting there. I have trolleys, so I finish the surgery. The trolley goes out. The next trolley comes in. The patient is draped. The speculum put in. Surgery is done and then the trolley goes out, 
one more trolley comes in. It's in fast forward, but you just saw four cataract surgeries there, and that's how it goes on. So you will have to develop a team, and the team has to work very efficiently. It has to go on like clockwork. The other, the eighth commandment is performance review. See, performance review is very important because you will have to get the feedback on your technique. So it's very important that you record all your surgeries, review them. So when I started off FACO surgeries, I used to record all my surgery, and in the evening I used to watch them. And then I used to realize, oh, this is where I'm struggling at this step, or this is that unnecessary movement that I'm doing, which I can avoid. And this is where I'm repeatedly doing the same step. So it's very important to review your videos because you can learn from yourself. You are your best teacher. And that's why performance review is very important. You'll also have to review your results, your complication management. We have a Lean Six Sigma program where we review our post-op um, results after cataract surgery. And we, we are able to get to 3.5 Sigma, almost 94, 95% within half adapter or spherical equivalent. This we have been able to do by incrementally improve, uh, improving each and every step, biometry, whether it's biometry, um, enhancing the ocular surface, so many things, uh, changing formula, equipment. So performance review is very important. Ninth, rest and recovery is very important because for you to perform optimally, you need to sleep well. You should get at least about seven hours of sleep, uninterrupted, good sleep, so that you are fresh and mentally you can be focused. Physically, you, are, you have recovered from the pre previous day. And most of us have late nights. Either we are doing uh, publication work or etc., or even on social media, and it goes on and on, or you're seeing YouTube videos. And you don't realize it, and you just get about five hours, six hours of sleep, and then you have a disturbed sleep, and you are not able to perform well in the OR. Even after you do your first case, okay, for the residents who do their first case, you wait for some time before you do your second case. So you're rested, you're relaxed, and you're able to recollect all the gains. So whatever muscle memory is there, whatever you have performed gets established, so that that helps your second uh, case and as as you keep doing cases then you develop a kind of a relaxed focus tenth is and the last commandment is equipment and innovation a top athlete always has his equipment in top condition you can see tennis players they never play with some other racket they're very specific even batsmen in cricket they have their particular bat which they are comfortable with and they use it so even as a surgeon you may have your small instruments which are very particular which you which help you so these are things that you need to check before the or you see that all the equipment is in top shape and then you can do your surgeries very well and innovation is something that you should always have there is always a way to do things better. Whatever you're doing, you can do it better. And you will always have to have that innovative mindset where you, you, can, you should think, OK, this is how it is done. But can it be done better? How can it be done better? And that is when you have an innovative mind and you will develop surgical techniques which are safer and more efficient. And then I'll show you a small video clip of, of a smile surgery and a technique which, which I do, which is very efficient. It's called lenticuloschisis. And you just enter with the forceps, and you can see that this is how I remove the lenticule. It's a no dissection technique. And you can see that uh, the whole surgery of removing the lenticule just takes 15 seconds, as compared to finding planes, dissecting, removing the lenticule. So, this is, again, something that you will have to think about techniques. You can develop a lot of your surgical techniques, and then that's how you become a top um, accomplished surgeon. So I think these are a few points to help you become an accomplished surgeon. And I wish that you all become surgery athletes. Thank you very much for your attention.